This is the situation, people. I wanted to, uh, you know, go out herping this week, but we get dumped on pretty good all of Tuesday and Wednesday. Got about 18 inches of snow total. I mean, this isn't even all of it. This is after two days of it compressing and melting. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna put herping on hold for a while, which is a shame because. I was just out last week, found my first spotted salamander, wood frogs, peepers, they were all out. The good news is that when all the snow melts, it's going to fill up the vernal pools, which means that the uh, you know tadpoles and larvae will all have more time to develop before those pools dry up and leave them stranded. <clears throat> but we're not here to film the snow. We're here to film reptiles. And when you can't film reptiles outside, we go inside. So, that's right, we're doing a update video on the animals so let's go down there and see what's going on all right first up and probably one of the most significant changes in the last couple months uh, you'll notice that um, Eli is gone Eli the bearded dragon he is not dead all is well and good uh, he actually went to go live at a local zoo they were looking for a bearded dragon as a presentation animal and since I already had three of them I decided that I would give up Eli, who I myself had taken in as a rescue, never really intended on keeping him. But, uh... So now we're down to, to Beans and Steve, and Steven, of course, is Eli's son. So it's good to have a little part of him still here with us. And he's doing good. Um, since Eli is gone, I moved Beans into his tank, and... Turok is now over where Beans was. Turok being the Chuckwalla. He's feeling a little camera shy. He's doing great. Been putting on a lot of weight lately. Eats like a horse, but only if you feed him before noon. Any later than that, and he, he won't eat. And he's in shed right now. So yeah, they're all doing good. Now, uh, I've had a few comments since my last tour video about my choice of substrate bedding. Look guys, um, <laughs> I've done all the research. I, I've read all the, the pros and cons on this stuff. Um, from what I've discovered, you know, loose substrate is not as big of a problem as it's made out to be. If these animals are well hydrated and the temperature is correct, then impaction is a, is a, a low risk. Now, if they were babies, if they were little tiny guys, yeah, sure. Um, keep them on paper towels, newspaper, carpet, whatever. But uh, so far I've not seen any issue with the 
the loose substrate. As you can see, they eat out of dishes and they eat their crickets in a bin. So, you know, um, I got it as a trial run, mostly because I thought it looked better for display purposes. It seemed the the dragons do seem to like it, and uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna really say about it. You know, like I said, I've done the research. I'm not a kid, um, and I've I've weighed the pros and cons. If if there's a complication, then I will certainly switch over to something else. Now that that's over, um, down here we got Leela and Gorgo, the African fat tail geckos. They also now have loose substrate. So I'm waiting, I'll wait for the comments on that. Of course, being fat tail geckos, they're sleeping because it's daytime. And they're actually in shed too, so I'm not going to bother them, but. This is a mix of sand and eco earth. And I do like this. I might switch over to that for the beardeds too. I don't know. Nibbler's out running around. Where'd he go? There he is. And he's due for a cage cleaning. You can see his little grease stains on the side of the glass. Oh, he's so cute though. Okay. Moving along, what else is there? A lot of changes are going to be coming up down here. Um, for one, I have ordered myself my very first snake rack. There's Max, he really likes to sit up there and see what's going on. I've ordered my very first snake rack from Animal Plastics. And here are the bins for it. I have the bins. I don't have the, the rack yet. It takes a long time to ship. These are some of the biggest racks that I could find for my budget. Um, normally I'm kind of against keeping snakes in rack systems because I don't feel like it gives them a lot of room. But um, as you can see, my snakes are in like 40 gallon breeders. I like to keep them in. This isn't a significant difference in size. Mostly it's just not as tall and there's a lot of wasted vertical space in there but this is going to be nice and economical for me I'm going to be able to stack I get to hold seven snakes so not all the snakes are going to fit and uh, the only snakes I'm going to put in there are some of the smaller uh, species or the less active ones and we'll see how it goes yeah I'm excited about it also a little apprehensive because yeah I mean keeping animals in tubs it's kind of weird I think but I'm certainly not the first. There are the quail. Um, it occurs to me that they're probably not button quail. I've been, it's been suggested that they're cartoonix quail or Japanese quail. Ooh. And that was Gadnuck. He just made a sound for us. Get them in a 40 gallon breeder, I think. Uh, just because it's not as narrow. So we'll see what happens with the whole snake rack thing. If I have a spare 40 gallon, then maybe I'll throw them in it. I've also had a lot of complaints about the cage that my rabbit is in. Now, I want to point out that this cage is 4x2x2 by two by two feet. It's about the size of a, a uh, 75 gallon aquarium. And yeah, you know, sure, I get it. Rabbits are active animals and they like to have lots of room. Now, what you don't see in my videos is that I have one of these and this thing sets up around here and comes out and back around and that gives him significantly more space. Now it's not up right now because I'm down here filming and doing stuff and uh, it would just be in the way so I don't put it up when I'm filming. But rest assured the rabbit does not spend all this time in the cage and in fact once the snake rack gets here this table is going to go completely and I'm going to have the rabbits set up so that 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 fence is up all the time and the cage is always open he'll always have access to get out of the cage so okay moving on you can see here this was Poncho's tank Poncho the loggerhead musk turtle he has moved now since I got rid of Eli, I now had a spare 40-gallon tank, and here he is in it, looking fat and happy, sitting up there basking. Yeah, he needs a new basking rock. 
I'm gonna see about getting one probably at the next reptile show maybe which comes up in April because uh, he just kind of sinks that one uh, also in here I also need to get a filter because this thing is abysmal it doesn't do anything uh, also in here are two crayfish that came in with the feeder fish at the pet store uh, I put them in there for him to eat and he didn't eat them and that was like a maybe a month ago so I guess I have crayfish now which is fine there's one it's kinda of dark over here I still need to get my overhead light replaced down here there's one and yeah I do feed him in a dish <laughs> which is kinda of weird for an aquatic turtle but it makes him easier to find these pellets these musk turtle pellets are quite small um sad news the African clawed frog died I have no idea why it um, it did develop a fungus and I was treating with Pemafix and it seemed to have cleared up but then the frog ended up dying on me anyway I'm pretty pissed about that I was a $30 frog I had been debating getting one for months and months years even and uh, when I finally break down to get one it uh, croaks on me, no pun intended it has been replaced though with this uh, gigantic goldfish who uh, you can't see very well because of the algae yeah, his eyes are a little cloudy and his fins are a little torn. This is kind of the way he came to me. Uh, my fish certainly went after him a little bit when he first showed up, but everybody's calmed down since then. That was a couple weeks ago. And yeah, look at the size of him. He's a beast. Now, I don't, again, I don't need to hear any comments about keeping goldfish with other fish. I'm not new at this. I know what I'm doing. Relax. <laughs> Alright, guys? Um... If something goes wrong, or if I feel like any of the fish are not in uh, peak health, then I, you know, I'll I'll do something about it. The fins will grow back. You know, anytime you add a new fish to a tank, there's going to be an adjustment period where the other, the fish have to adapt to each other and set a pecking order. He's claimed that spot. That's his spot. He seems all right. I'm not too worried about him at the moment. Nobody's gone after his physical body and his fins are already starting to heal up a bit so yeah giant goldfish who would have thought there's old man Raph Gamera chilling up there on his masking platform there's a uh, the big Midas cichlid there still, he's still kicking all the little community fish Get a nice shot of this uh, a, uh, dwarf flag fish. That's what that is. Dwarf flag cichlid. Those guys are cool. Yeah. There's uh, Ogopogo chilling out, basking. Now, you leopard frog guys that are obsessed with these guys are going to be very excited to see this even though it's winter outside it's still spring indoors and we have frog spawn yeah how about that second year in a row that they've spawned for me uh, again uh, like I said last year there's nothing I can really do with these eggs I can't release the, the frogs they're not native to the area and there's no mark to sell them so we'll just see what happens if any make it they'll probably end up you know maybe I'll put them with turtles or fish or something and see what happens They'll probably get eaten, but such is life. Now, I've had a couple people ask me in the past if I could send these to them. Um, and to answer that, no, I, I really can't. Uh, in New York State, it is illegal to sell native species. So even though these are native, not native to where I live, they are native to the state. And so I cannot sell uh, sell these to you. Sorry. The uh, Firebelly Toads are doing good. Pothos in there is just ridiculous. Lots of these baby mystery snails. Every, absolutely everywhere. And I had some ghost shrimp in here, but I don't know if they're in there anymore. And, oh, what's going on down here? Oh, man. I think those snails are making love. Yikes. Okay. So the snakes, they all ate yesterday, so I'm not going to bother them. We'll do another video with the snakes. Tortoises. 
They're doing good. They've started to squabble a little bit over food, so I've started feeding them in two separate dishes. And that seems to have helped. There's Reptilicus. Yeah, okay. Bull Snake is not out today and she is not cranky, so you don't have to listen to her hissing. I just gave, um, oh, what's your name? Gator. Gator Face. I gave Gator Face a, a 10 gallon tank. Thought she needed something a little bigger. She wasn't a 5 gallon, but she's growing. And she's definitely uh, napping right now. Waiting for the night time. There's Thor. He's doing good. He'll probably go in one of those bins. And so will Cleo, the other ball python. Max. You know, I'm still not sure if Max is going to go in a bin because he's just so inquisitive. He's always out, you know. What else is there? Mm, there's Big Red lounging out. Tree Frog. This isn't a full tour, guys, so forgive me for skipping over some critters. I'm just trying to figure out who has gotten an update recently. And what's changed down here? Look at that fat, happy frog. Oh my goodness. I did, I did change the name of my cane toad. There she is. Yep. And she needs a bigger tank too. Again, so once Snake Rack gets here and I have some empty tanks, I'll start upgrading these uh, these big frogs and stuff. But there's Lunchbox. Well, formerly Lunchbox. Now her name is Tinkles. Because she pees when you pick her up. And Tinkles is a more amusing name for her than Lunchbox. Lunchbox, I'll probably end up naming one of these bullfrogs Lunchbox. They don't have names yet. Oh, where's little Ymir? He's up in the back there. This is my mountain horn dragon, the one that I replaced Lonji with. He's very feisty. There he is. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> You're ridiculous. I hold him all the time, and he's. he's he always does this. Look at his mouth though. Look how cool that is. It's like black on the inside. I like that. Alright, I'll leave you alone. So that's Ymir. And I guess that's about it guys. I can't think of anything else. Um, I'm gonna do a full tour video again in April. That's after the reptile show, and hopefully by then I'll also have the snake rack set up. So this basement's going to look a lot different um, in April. So look out for that. In the meantime, you know, I might do some more videos down here. And hopefully, oh, some field herping videos. Because I need to get out of this house. The eggs are all doing good. These guys are due to hatch, like, at any time. Any time now. They were laid on... January 9th. These are uh, giant day gecko eggs. So they were late on the 9th, yeah, any day. And then I got a couple more day gecko eggs, and I have a single fat tail gecko egg. The other one didn't make it. So fingers crossed on that, that'll be my first fat tail gecko if it hatches. But yeah, let me know if there's anybody I missed that you'd like me to go over. Like, comment, and subscribe. I guess I better feed Nibbler. There you go.